Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a quick review on the new Standout Eyes Collection from Sigma. So, just so that we're like open and honest here on this channel, um, I will let you know I did get the press release for this. So, these products were sent to me. However, my thoughts on my own, I'm not getting paid or sponsored to say only positive things or anything like that. So, I, I like, I really like their press review things. I've never, like this is just looks so nice. You can, like pull this out and the girls like eyeliner changed. Pretty impressed um, with the packaging. So this released on the 21st of July. So it's already out. So these have been out for a little bit. So there are six um, colors in this collection. I'm going to have swatches on my blog, so it's Rebecca Shores MUA, and I will have a link directly to my blog post down below, and I'll have a couple clickable links within the video. So the first color is Wicked. Um, this is what they call their blackest black. This is something I've actually been wearing a lot. Obviously, I wear black eyeliner. If you follow me on Instagram, um, I post every single day, and most of the time I have black eyeliner on. This is probably the one I would use most out of this collection. It's very black, like super, super black, which is something I look for, and it's very long wearing. So let's talk about the colors first. So there's six colors in this collection. The first one is Wicked, which is their blackest black. This is the one I've been wearing the most. There's Liberty Toasted, which is what they call a toasty warm brown. Um, it's just a slightly more lighter brown. This is a little more natural of a color. So if you, if you like a brown that's a little more on the light side, that's very... Purdy. There is there is stunningly ladylike, which they describe as a dark brown black. Um, this would be really nice if you don't really like black eyeliner, but you want to wear eyeliner. This is actually a color I really like wearing as cat eyes um, and like winged liner because I think it's kind of different. It's not a black, but it's still dark. So I think this is fun. Um, this is a color I've been wearing a bit. I've been wearing it under shadows actually like if I want a really deep like brown or something or I want a black but I want to add more depth so I don't want to add like black on black this is really nice as a base shadow because I don't use liners just as liners uh, this one's my favorite out of the collection this is this they call standout peacock and they describe it as a deep indigo blue um, and it is it's like almost like a teal color and this I love this color um, it's not quite as opaque as I would like it I'd usually have to do either a kind of thick line or do two thin layers to build it up to the intensity I would like so that's kind of my downside works great as a base um, and I did like an ombre liner with this and the gray color and that was really fun and different but I, I love those teal colors so obviously that was right in my alley this is really striking and this is what they call a true purple I would agree it's a true purple um, this one is more opaque than the indigo but again it's not quite as opaque as like their blacks because their black is super black so and that was the first one I tried out um, on my eyes and stuff so I was like oh these are gonna be the same but they're not quite a perfect consistency between everything but this one's great um, as a liner I haven't used this as a base shadow yet and it's slightly more opaque, so this is one that I could wear without building up layers. It's not, like, too transparent. It's just not quite as opaque as, like, their black. And then this one is one I actually will probably wear quite a bit. This one's called Unexpected. And it's kind of unexpected because I don't have another liner like this. Like, not, like, that's mine personally or in my kit. And they describe it as a neutral stony gray. Um, it's definitely... A neutral gray it has a slight greenish tinge um, that doesn't bother me it may bother you so don't don't look for it to be like a super cool gray which is like I feel like what most people like think of when they think gray it does have a slight greenish tinge but it's rather it is rather neutral um, this I feel like has the best consistency out of all of them I don't know why that is it probably just has to do with like the pigment and stuff but this one's super creamy so this one's really easy to work with and I like it being gray I think that's kind of fun I don't have anything that's gray um, I wore this as like a gradient liner with the teal and that was really fun um, this is something I'll probably be wearing a lot more in the fall and again it worked well as a base shadow I really like 
grays and mauvey colors. So this is this is fun. I like this because I don't know where else I could get a gray liner. So I think the consistency is pretty good. The best consistency is that unexpected, the gray color. By far, it's the creamiest. I prefer a creamier liner to a drier liner. Personally, um, like MAC Fluid Line, that's the texture I like. It has a lot of slip to it. Um, however, I know that's not true for everyone. And usually when they have more slip, they are also don't will last as long. So you kind of figure out what you like better. Um, so they're not my favorite consistency overall, um, but I've been wearing them because they work really well and they last a really long time. I'm, that's what I'm most impressed with is that they're quite waterproof. And that's a huge thing I look for because they do have really watery eyes. Ones that they do last long enough that you will need a makeup remover. Um, I use like those Neutrogena one that you just shake up and that works great to take it off. Uh, color selection, I think there is a good color selection. Obviously there could be more, um, but it's it's what you like need. There's a, two options of brown, which I think is cool because there's that softer brown that Liberally Toasted is a lot more of a natural brown. So maybe if you're starting out with makeup or you're very fair and you prefer like not black mascara and stuff like that, but then Lady likes one that's like, it's brown, but it's a black and brown, so it's dark, but it's not quite black. Um, I think gray is a really cool one to have. I just haven't seen a gray liner before. Maybe I'm just dumb and there is gray liners out there. I like that. I like that there's two colors and they're more on the wearable side of colors. They're not like crazy oranges or reds. Um, so I do think that was a wise choice. The thing with the colors is they're not quite as like they don't have quite as much color depth. They're a little more on the transparent side. So that's kind of a downside. Uh, it's like one where it's like, eh, it's a little more work. Am I gonna use it as a liner or am I gonna use it as a base shadow? We'll see. Um, and the black's great, but it's also just black. So color selection, everyone has a black liner. Pigmentation, it's great on all of them. I kind of already touched on that in my like texture thing. Um, the only the colored ones have that kind of issue. The other ones go on quite opaque. Again, swatches will be on the blog. And overall, my thoughts on the liners are I like the packaging. Apparently, the packaging has changed. They used to be more bulky. These I have no gripe with, so I'm guessing that it changed a lot. Um, they're just cute little lids. It has the holographic Sigma on them, and they're little glass pots. So... And just they have the color on the back they are 0.1 ounces which is 2.8 grams so they are a decent size so let's talk about value real quick they are $14 each they are 2.8 grams so fluid line is 3 grams and they're $16 so they're kind of roughly the same price as Mac um, for me I don't think that that is a bad price at all mostly just because this is enough liner to last me probably a year like I maybe if you use a lot of liner I wear liner almost every day and it feels like it takes forever for me to go through a pot um, and these are quite long lasting so it's not like you're gonna have to reapply during the day either so I would say it's a pretty fair price for the amount of product you get and it's a pretty good quality product so my overall thoughts I like them um, I've been using the black wicked a lot Again, with the color-wise, I got the whole collection. If I was to purchase one of these, I would definitely get the Wicked and the Unexpected and the Peacock, um, since those are the colors I will personally wear the most. Would I repurchase? Um, yeah, I would definitely repurchase at least the black. Um, I don't know how much I will actually end up using the gray, so that will kind of like depend on if I would repurchase it. The standout Peacock, if it was perfectly opaque, I would definitely repurchase because of the color and I would definitely repurchase the ladylike in my kit because I don't have a liner that's that kind of black and brown color that has that kind of longevity. So they also came out with two new brushes. So we're gonna talk about the brushes next. Um, I just kind of wanted to separate those so that you don't have to like watch the whole video if you don't care about one of them. Um, they have their line perfecter and this is the E68 and then they have their winged liner which is the E06. So we're going to talk about this one first. The EO6 I've actually really liked. I've been using this basically all the time since I got it. It is a very thin tip um, at an angle. So it's very, very small. 
I like it because I like very small wings because my eyes are hooded and small. So this is great, especially if you have a smaller eye shape or maybe if you're more into like the mono lid, hooded lid. Or if you're just someone that's like, I like very baby wings on the edge of my eyes. So this is a great brush for that. It's, again, it looks like all the other Sigma brushes I own. Um, typical, feral, everything. It's nothing special compared to the other ones. Um, it's easy to clean and it's not it doesn't have too much movement but that would be the one like my one con to it is i kind of wish it was even shorter um like their ferrule came in even farther or something i don't know exactly what i want there's just it moves just slightly more than i would like it to at least use with their liners um with a more creamy liner i don't have that issue um but it's to make that really thin line I like and making it perfectly smooth, I wish there wasn't quite so much movement. So now we'll go on to the Line Perfector. This is really nice, especially if you're starting out with winged liner. Um, it's great for just adding a little bit of concealer and you can just drag it there to perfect your line because it's basically just the right shape. I can pretty much knock out winged liner in one go. I don't really do a lot of cleanup. Um, I did use this to clean up just to kind of like play with it. Um, one thing I like to do is actually use a silicone primer and just use that to actually clean it up, not concealer. And then that worked great for that. I've actually really been liking this to clean up my lip line because that is something that a lot of times I clean up because I want a really sharp line here. So this is a cleanup brush. It's pretty nice. Um, we're going to talk kind of overall quality. It's basically the same quality as the Sigma brushes. I like them about as much as I like MAC, but they're not as nice as like... I don't know, like Hadoku brushes or something like that. But if you're starting out on a makeup collection um, and you don't want to drop the big bucks, I think these are really nice. Um, the EOS 6 goes for 14 and the E68 goes for 16. Um, would I repurchase? I mean, brushes aren't something that I'm really going to have to repurchase, but we'll still answer the question. Would I repurchase? I would definitely get the winged liner brush. Again, I really like this and it's something I grab for a lot. Line Perfector brush. Personally, I wouldn't pick this one up if I was going to buy it myself um, since I really use it mostly for around my lips. But if you're someone that likes to concealer to perfect your eyeliner, this could be something that works really great for you. And that is pretty much my thoughts on the Sigma Standout Eyes collection. It's the one over their gel liners as well as their brushes. Again, I will have d swatches and more like in-depth review stuff on my blog if you want to check that out too. Um, my blog also links to my video, so thanks for coming from my blog if you came from there. Anyhow, I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. Please follow me on other, my other social media. I will have that at the end of the video in the down box below, and I will see you guys again soon. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I correct and conceal under my eyes. This is a little bit salmon-y, which works well because I do have some blue in there as well.